Hi everybody and welcome back to The Upper Room. This week we're talking about understanding your enemy. We all have a different opinion on who God is uh, and, and how we should worship him and what form of Christianity is the right one. But the one thing that we all can agree on is who the devil is and the stories in the Bible that describe the devil. So therefore, we should try not to argue with each other to see who's right. We should look at the devil and see the kinds of things that he has done to separate us from God over, over time, to separate us uh, from each other, to try and divide us up, to destroy us one by one, because that's the first rules of engagement, divide and conquer. So if we can understand his tactics and how he works and operates, uh, we can better understand our faith and our church and see if the devil had a hand in creating our church, if it was if if he has done something to our church to try and turn others away from it, um, <clears throat> and what exactly uh, his motives are, things all like, and things like this. So um, for this, I'm going to talk about three main subjects, um, uh, or rather three main stories in the Bible that we can actually uh, see uh, the devil's uh, handiwork in full display. First, we uh, know that the devil has been separating God's children from God uh, since even before mankind uh, was created. When the devil uh, learned that God would become man, he swept uh, a third of the stars from the sky. So uh, some theologians say that about 200 angels uh, he took with him uh, from heaven when he was cast out uh, and convinced them to go with him. So they, he divided them from God and, uh, and, and convinced them to leave, to turn their back on God and sin against him. So he's been scattering God's people even before human, humanity uh, uh, was created. Then we have Adam and Eve. He tempted Eve uh, in three ways, um, by sight, by taste, and by power. So it looks pretty good. You should try and you should try this fruit. But God said, no, ah, that's okay. It'll taste good. You should try it. It's not that bad. Uh, but God said, uh, I'll die if I eat it. You won't die. You won't die. It's just going to be fine. But God said, no, if you eat it, you will be like God. Power, the pride of life. You will improve yourself if you do this. You will be better than you are now. And, though, and so she did. And once she had given in to him and his temptations, he then used her to get to Adam. So we can see that the devil, once he tempts those whom we love and they give in, he will use them to try and make someone closest to them who love them fall because we trust those whom we love. And if it is somebody who would stand up to his temptations, they'd be more likely to fall if he was able to send someone whom they trust to try and convince them to partake in what they just partook in, in order to sin against God as well. Not all of us will accept something from the devil, but we're more likely to accept something that may, look, that may not look harmless from our wives or from our brothers, or from our sisters, for that matter. So we can see that the devil tempts us in three ways. And we can also see that the devil t uses those whom he has won over to go, out in uh, to go out and try and destroy those who are closest to them whom, they whom others love. So he uses those that we love against us um, uh, in, in order to make us fall. How do we know this? Well, because he used Adam's own wife, Eve, to cause the fall of man. We also know uh, from the story of Solomon, King Solomon, he had everything. He had tons of wives, about 700 wives and 300 concubines. He was a king. He had everything at his disposal. He even had the blessings of God because he was King David's son. And he, God even bestowed him with wisdom and warned him, don't worship idols. Don't go and, you know, worship those, you know, the statues of, you know, the, these idols because there's demons behind them. 
and you know none of these things point to me and all this stuff so and in the end one of his wives a couple of his wives uh, convinced him that it was okay and he went and worshiped them he went and worshiped the idols and so even though that he knew that it was wrong uh, and God warned him and told him the devil uh, still used his wives who were closest to him, whom he loved, uh, and that they worshiped these idols, which we know are demons behind them. Those demons convinced those women to go and tempt him to come and worship them. In whatever manner it, it took, some type of seduction or whatever it did, it worked. And eventually he fell. So we can see that the devil uses those whom we love, that he has won over, to destroy us again we can also see that the devil can can have control over our emotions in some ways and it all begins with a whisper Cain and Abel uh, Abel uh, was someone that was very pleasing to God Abel loved God God loved Abel Abel uh, uh, tended goats and he knew that his goats uh, and everything that his family had was given to them by God. So Abel gave the very best to God in sacrifice to him. Those are the best, the first lamb of the flock, and all these, and all this. And God was pleased with that. It's not that God wants the wants the you know the best of what we have. He wants to see. He wants us to. He wants us to recognize that what we have is because He gives it to us, and that He wants us to love Him so much that we want to give Him. The best that we have and that's this is very pleasing to the Lord because he he blesses up with us with even more because we appreciate it and Cain on the other hand he would tend the he would uh, till the ground and grew crops and so he would always take the the lesser crops and put them on the altar because they were gonna rot anyway or he'd burn them because they were gonna burn anyway and he kept the best for himself but what Cain didn't understand was in Cain's work and growing the crops it wasn't only Cain's hand uh, that was tilling the ground. God had to provide the right sunlight. He had to provide the right temperature uh, for the right conditions for the crops to grow. He had to provide the rain. He had to provide uh, soil with enough nutrients. So God and Cain were both working together in order to bring those crops forth. And Cain didn't, couldn't see this. He just saw it as, I did all this work and I want the best for me and my family and I'm not going to let the best sit up on some altar or be burned just to go to waste after we waited all these months for the crops to come in. So God was displeased with Cain because of his selfishness. Cain, uh, be, uh, Cain uh, became jealous of Abel because of the devil's whispers. Oh my gosh, God doesn't love you. Um, he loves your brother Abel better. You should just get rid of him. And so all this stuff is building up into venial sin inside of us, inside of ourselves. These little small thoughts of, of being of jealousy and envy and hatred towards our own brother, towards Cain's own brother. And it continues to fester and fester until he gets angry, until finally there's a proper space somewhere where there's an opportunity for a mortal sin to, to happen. And therefore, the devil built a fire within within Cain and it all started with a whisper and he blew on it and then it just grew and built into this venial sin inside of them and then finally this Cain's jealousy and envy and anger turned into rage and that that venial sin was moved by his will to the outside into our world into in the into the form of rage and from rage it turned into murder and it all started with a whisper. So we can clearly see from this story that the devil will not only tempt us, and his purpose is to scatter us from God and each other to separate us, to destroy us, and he will also use those whom we love to try to attack us and destroy us. But in, or, in, in order for him to do that, he will start a fire inside of us with a whisper. So, we can see that from the story of Cain and Abel, Cain was used as a pawn by the devil, and 
brought mortal sin into into our world. Cain is the first human being to ever commit the sin of murder, and he killed his own brother because of the devil's control over his emotions and his assistance into his sin. And therefore, the result of this was a separation from God. Someone that God loved got killed because God loved him and because he loved God. And Cain was separated from his family and from God. Uh, and so everyone was scattered again. So uh, we can see that that if we can compare all of these ways that the devil uh, has attacked human beings all um, through these three stories, and there's many more, but I just don't want to make a really long video. And so, uh, and, and, and we can consistently see a pattern and, and the methods of what happens when, when this does happen. Now we can take these and, and, and we can look at our own religion, our own church, our own faith. How was it started? Why was it started? Who started it? Who's the founder of my church? Where did it originally come from? Where did the doctrine come from? All of its doctrine came from its original source, the Catholic Church. And uh, we know that the devil has been trying to separate mankind from God and each other and destroy those who God loves and who love God uh, ever since time began. So if we can realize that Christianity has been scattered, not because of a good reason, because the devil wants us scattered to destroy us one by one. So, uh, and, and we have to see what, what, why have we been scattered from our original source? What does that original source have, the Catholic Church, that, uh, that, that all the rest don't have? What has been removed? Because what has been removed is what, can, is what we can use to attack him with. You know, uh, uh, if, if these things from its original source, from Christ's church, the Catholic church, that, that, that Jesus himself founded and built with all its sacraments and, and sacramental weapons and, and all the teachings from Christ himself and the Eucharist and all of these things have been removed from your church, there's a reason for that. Don't just believe you know that you don't need these things for your for your christian battle the devil wants you to believe that you don't and for those of us who possess the truth it is our responsibility to tell others who are in darkness so thanks again for watching the upper room i'm jared i'll see you again next week <music>